Welcome back folks, this is Shane. Today we're doing a re-review of the Fender Champion 100 Solid State Amplifier. This is an absolute beast. We're gonna have this up at gig volume in the room here. This is a very loud amplifier. And I'm gonna also, at the end of this video, cover a lot of the frequently asked questions I see come in on my last video I did a few years ago of this amplifier that I just didn't cover in the, in the actual video. So we're gonna cover those things in this video and also at the end also. Let's take a look at this up close. Here's the amp up close. Now, as you can see, we've got lots going on, but it's actually really straightforward and nice and simple, which is one of the strengths of this particular amplifier system over a lot of amps that require a USB or phone app. So we get a clean channel over here, master volume, two band EQ, and effects level, which determines how much of any of these effects that you want. So you can only pick one at a time. The reverb and delay can also be used in conjunction as well. I'll go through these in the video but you can assign how much of that you want with this control over here as well, as we also get a tap tempo button. So if you're using delay, for example, a tremolo, you can set the speed just by tapping this button. I think that's really cool. Over here, we get the actual gain channel of the amplifier, and we get a whole lot of different voicings from jazz to tweed to blackface to British metal. Each of the steps basically have three incremental steps as well. So you get a couple different gain stages for each of them. We're gonna go through the majority of them, not all of them, but you'll get a gist of how they sound. Then you can also assign an effects just to this channel over here and how much you want thanks to this effects level also. For those who are into practicing at home at lower volumes, you also get a headphones output as well as an auxiliary in. So the auxiliary in means you can take your phone or any sort of MP3 player, if they still exist, and plug it in here via a headphone sort of jack. Pretty cool. You also get a preamp out and power amp in, kind of like the effects loop. One of the great things about this amp is it's a two by 12, so you get two 12 inch speakers, and this amp is rated at 100 watts and it is blisteringly loud. Even though this is solid state and it's on a valve slash tube amplifier, it still throws a lot of wind. And having that second speaker makes a huge difference over something like the 40, which is the smaller one than this. It's also much, much louder than the 50XL, which I've reviewed recently as well. A massive thanks to Sky Music here in Melbourne, Australia for letting me borrow this for the review. I really appreciate it. If you live in Australia, check them out. All the links will be below. If you also live in the US, I'll post some Sweetwater links down there as well. They help support the channel at no extra cost to you. So thank you so much. Let's get into it. All right, let's get into it. I'm playing my bog standard Fender Mexican Stratocaster. This is all stock. We're going into the clean channel and I've got this crank. The volume's at five. I've got the treble at four and a half, the bass at four, and the effects level for just the reverb set to three and a half. So let's give this a shot. Bridge and middle pickups, here we go. What a clean tone. I don't care if this is a solid state amp. That sounds epic in the room and it's really, really loud as well. So let's try this with a Maxon overdrive pedal. This is the OD808. For those familiar with the Tube Screamer, this is what the Tube Screamer actually is. It's a Maxon overdrive pedal. So I've got everything set to one o'clock. Let's give this a shot. So the good news is that takes pedals extremely well. So even if you don't like the drive section of this amplifier, I'm sure most people will still like some of the sounds in there. You can absolutely use this as a pedal platform amplifier. I'm gonna do a full video on that coming up as well. So subscribe if you're not already subscribed. And now we're gonna check out some of the other effects as well. So I'm gonna hit delay and reverb here. And I'm gonna keep the pedal on just cause I think it sounds pretty nice. Here we go. Beautiful. You can tap tempo that as well. Slow it down, I'll turn the pedal off. Neck pick up. The 
Now that's actually a little bit too wet in terms of its signal. So let's turn that back. Let's try this. Beautiful. Over to the drive channel of the amplifier now, and as you can see, I've got the gain set at six. We have the master volume on this channel at five, so it's up loud again, and we have it set to tweed. Now, each of the settings have a couple of different notches, changes the gain structure a little bit. So let's give this a shot on neck pickup to start with on tweed. Let's click it up to the next tweed setting. And over to the next tweet setting. That one has that small sort of champ sound, very small kind of tweet sound, whereas the one before it sounded way bigger. It sounds like the full size amp. Over to the blackface setting, and this is reminiscent of the 65 Deluxe Reverb, for example, when you start to crank it up. Let's give this a shot. Yeah, that one's still nice and clean. Sounds great. Let's crank up the drive a little more, see what happens. It's got a big throw of sound. That's one thing I've noticed about this amp over many of the other Fender sort of modeling amps. It definitely throws a lot of wind out from it. Let's crank up to the next blackface setting. This will get a whole lot dirtier. Let's have a listen. <laughs> sound for blues and all that kind of stuff and if you turn down it still cleans up guitar up I'm not going to go through every single one of these presets but we're going to go through the main one so over to British now let's give this a shot Now the volume just dropped out of it a little bit, so I'm gonna turn this up, crank up the gain a little more. Let's try this. Yeah, for whatever reason, that first British preset doesn't have a lot of volume. Let's crank it up to a higher gain setting on the same British setting. Let's grab a different guitar and see how it responds with some humbuckers. <laughs> yeah, that sort of setting right there is made for a guitar that's shaped like this, regardless of the brand. Anything similar, it's gonna sound pretty rocking as you can hear. And now over to one of the metal settings. Back when I did the last video, I didn't know any metal riffs, and I know one old school one that you probably might, I'll butcher it, but it'll be familiar at least. Mm -hmm. 
You know what? Let's turn off the reverb first. Let's turn that all the way down. I actually think that tone rocks. I'm by no means a metal guy. I like that kind of music from time to time, the uh, sort of like the older stuff. But uh, yeah, man, I gotta tell you, that actually feels really great to play. Nice and full and fat sounding. Let's click it over to the other metal one and see how that sounds in comparison here. We'll go back to bridge. <laughs> but I thought I'd throw it in there just in case. All right. And now over to jazz, which will be completely different to the sound that we just heard. I'm not sure why jazz wasn't sort of at the front of this list. Does it go all the way around? All right, so the pot goes all the way around. I thought it stopped, but all right, over to jazz, neck pickup. All right, it's very bright. Let's turn the treble down to about five. Still really bright. I'm going to turn my tone control down, which is something I don't often do. sound for some reason though the preset is just really really bright I'm gonna turn the treble on the amp down to two turn my tone control back up we'll see how it sounds again a lot of jazz guys not that I can play jazz go for that sort of rolled out sound so that's with the treble at two turn it back up to three That's the sound, you can get it out of the amp. I thought I was gonna need to use my tone control for that because it was just immensely more bright than even the metal setting, but um, turn the treble down and you're good to go. So overall, those sounds pretty good. I think what we're gonna do now is just have a quick look at some of the effects that are on board. Now both channels are identical in terms of what you get. So I'm only gonna spend a little bit of time maybe on just the dirty channel and we'll go through some of them and see how they sound as well. So let's do it. All right, so over to my 52 Rishi Telecaster loaded with a set of Joe Barton Danny Gatton pickups. I'm gonna go through each of the effects now and I'll show you how they sound, but this is the tone that I'll be working with. This is neck pickup. <laughs> and that's with all the effects currently off. So the first one we have is wah, and we're gonna turn up the effects level to about six so we can definitely hear each of them. Here we go. You know what? It's actually pretty usable. I don't mind that at all. Over to Flanger. Here we go. Yeah. 
Yeah, I've never been the biggest flanger fan, but that actually sounds pretty good as well. Over to one of the vibratone settings. Let's try this. That sounds great. I'm a big fan of that sound. I use it usually for comping behind another guitarist. Works great in a two guitar setup on stage. Really cool. Over to chorus, delay, and reverb. Should be interesting. Let's play a big G chord. almost like I was going to take off in terms of the feedback loop. That's pretty cool. Hopefully we'll get there. Over to just straight up delay now. And I'm actually going to turn this up a little bit because where's the effects level right here? I want to see what I can do. So this is neck pickup still. <laughs> You can also tap tempo and make it very slow. Yeah, very cool. You can also change the effects amount too. So if you want less in the mix, just turn down the effects level. And if you hit a wrong note like I just did, it comes back at you a lot. Yeah, very cool. And now over to one of my favorite effects of all time, tremolo, and I've got the effects level set up. Let's put it at five and a half. So here we go. Neck pickup. Now, the cool thing about this tremolo, some tremolos that you hear, say that your volume's here, they, go, they duck below and back up. This actually feels like it's going over and under the actual volume level. I guess I'll hear that back on the recording, but in the room it sounds huge, so that's awesome. Probably the one most people will use is this for the solo tones. It's delay and reverb working together. Let's give this a shot. <laughs> Now that's a really wet signal, so I'm going to turn that down. I think that sounds pretty good. I've also got a scratchy pot on my guitar. If you're hearing any crackling, it's nothing to do with the amp. Yeah, I had to get that fixed. All right, over to Just Reverb. And there's a couple of different stages of that as well. We'll just choose the one in the center and we'll turn that up to about four. I'm actually just going to crank the gain up a little more. So the gain is now on eight. Let's try this. This is bridge pickup. <laughs> I just wrapped the strings at the end there so you could hear the reverb effect a bit better. That's the 
sort of sound I could use at a gig and just use my volume control to get my dynamics sorted out on stage. But overall, yeah, that's a really usable tone. A little bit of reverb, nice and simple. What can I tell you? It sounds pretty good. Let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks for watching, folks. This is Shane. So I'm going to hopefully answer a few of the frequently asked questions I know will come in about this amplifier. So is it loud enough to gig with? Absolutely. If you want to go to rehearsals or if you've got a gig, you can definitely get loud enough on stage tones with this. If you need it any louder, you can, of course, mic it up or whatever you want to do to get it to the PA system. So it's got plenty of headroom on the clean channel as well. I'm actually shocked how loud the clean channel is. It almost felt louder than the drive channel tones, which was a bit odd. But yeah, plenty of clean headroom, takes pedals extremely well. I'll have a full video coming up about my pedal board going into this and how it sounds and all that kind of stuff working with pedals. But I want to just focus on the tones of the amp. So overall, what are the effects like on this? Surprisingly great. So the only sort of downside is I wish one of the effects would, would have just been like a dirt pedal and just to keep it simple like that. And I also wish it had its own reverb circuit. I don't know why amp manufacturers don't put just a reverb circuit independent to everything else that's going on with these digital amps. It just makes so much more sense. It's the Achilles heel of a lot of these type of amplifiers where you have to have either reverb on, which it has, but then you can't add any other effect in front of it. So if it had its own reverb circuit, it would be pretty much the best value for money amp out there for what it does. And I'll tell you what, I would take this over a lot of the digital modeling amps and things like the Katana because I don't need to hook this up to an actual computer for it to work. I can plonk it down. If I want to use my pedal to get the sound that I love, I can just go straight into the clean channel and I'm good to go. No fiddling around with laptops. No USB cables, none of that kind of stuff. You can just plug and play, and I love that in an amplifier. Maybe it's the older I'm, I get, even though I'm an ex-tech guy, I, I just find the simplicity of these amplifiers so much more enjoyable than having all of these options at your disposal and then getting option paralysis. So if you're not into the whole modeling amplifier thing, I'm not that big fan of it, to be honest, anymore. I really like the fact you can just kind of plug into something like this and get a really usable tone. Now, in terms of the drive channel sounds, there's definitely some really great ones. I really like the blackface ones. I think they sounded the best. If you're a metal player, oh man, that metal tone, is, even though I'm not a metal player, I actually really like the tone of it. It felt good to play. A lot of them are overly scooped and they sound like it's all bass and all highs, but it actually had a nice mids presence as well. You get a three band EQ on the actual drive channel and a two band EQ on the clean channel. So there's plenty of tone shaping options. I could have spent all day, you know, tweaking the EQs, but I kind of got them the way that I liked it, at least for this particular video to show you how they sounded. Now, even on the drive channel, the effects that are built into this still sound pretty good. I really like the wah effect. I thought that sounded really nice as well. But yeah, there's plenty you can choose from. I just really wish they had to put a reverb circuit on its own, but it's not a deal breaker. If you've already got pedals that you like, you can run that into either channel and you'll be laughing. So I think that's pretty cool. I know another question that might come up is, should I replace the speakers that are in this amp? I don't know, I don't really think so. At the price these come in at, they're actually surprisingly great. I would opt to take this out to a gig over some modeling amplifiers because I know if something's not right, I can turn around and fiddle with it on stage as opposed to needing a computer to hook it up and to adjust parameters that way. So having everything on the front in just this analog sort of format, put that in quotations, to me is a much better deal if you're a live player. If you're a home player only, you might get some more use out of a modeling amplifier, but this is loud. Don't, you know, get this up to five and it's comparable in volume to some of my other amplifiers in my collection. It's probably the equivalent of like a 30 to 40 watt valve amplifier. Something around there, maybe not exactly, but it's, it's louder than you probably might be experiencing it on the video. So go check one of these out. A huge thanks to Sky Music in Melbourne, Australia for letting me borrow this. I really appreciate that. If you want to find out more about this amplifier, links will be in the description below through to Sky Music. If you also live overseas, there'll be some Sweetwater links down there as well. I hope this video has been helpful. If it has, please give it a thumbs up. I appreciate that. And I'll catch you on the next one. See ya. If you liked the video you just watched, check out these two on screen.